say I, uh, I don't get it. What's all the trouble about anyway? Which one is it? Uh, that's the one, sir. Bring the Geiger counter over here. Not too close now. <laughs> Nationwide atomic bomb plot. New York police reported today that another miniature atomic bomb was discovered in one of the storerooms of a New York office block. This is the third atomic bomb that has been discovered in the past few weeks. It had attachments enabling it to be exploded by radio. The chief of police has issued a statement requesting that all citizens remain calm. Stay tuned to this station for further bulletins. Professor, who do you think's doing all this? Well, from what I've read, Jimmy, the bombs are very small and badly made. It appears that they are being manufactured by a very small country with big ideas. But it's clever enough to succeed. But what are they trying to do, Mike? The idea is, Jimmy, that they smuggle these atomic bombs into the United States, and their agents plant them in strategic places. That's right. For example, in thickly populated areas like New York, aircraft and missile plants and so on. I get it. When they have enough of these fixed, then someone will explode them all at the same time, by radio. Uh, yes, Jimmy. Uh, the beauty of the plan, if it worked, would be the element of surprise. Uh, the whole thing would be over in a flash, uh, so to speak. But isn't the State Department doing anything about it, Dr. Beaker? Well, of course they are, Jimmy. The problem is to discover how the bombs are being brought into the country. And I, for one, am going to try and find out. Sounds like a job for the supercar team. What do you say, fellas? Whose idea was this, anyway? I think I've read all the newspapers for the last six months, and I still haven't found any clues. Uh, keep trying, Mike. If somebody is bringing in atomic bombs by the uh, back door, so to speak, there's a chance that some strange incident might have been reported in the papers. Dr. Beaker, I have noticed that two papers, some three months ago, reported an unidentified submarine off the Gulf Coast. Say, Professor... I got a report in this paper which says that an unidentified submarine was located there only last week. Uh, Mike, does it give the exact location? Well, it says a submarine was spotted 22 miles east of Temport. Say, Doc, do you think we found a clue? I don't know, Mike, but I feel it warrants an investigation. I'm going to give her a thorough cockpit check, Professor. There's no telling what we're going to run into out at Temport. Ah, uh, now then, Jimmy... Uh, just check that we have everything ready. Okay, Dr. Baker. A portable transmitter and cable. Check. Switching over to remote. Automatic pistols. Check. Ammunition. Yep, two boxes. Uh, correct. And uh, nuts for Mitch. Nuts for Mitch? Mitch! <laughs> Charging port engine. Charging port. 5,000, 7,000, 9,000, 11,000, 13,000, 15,000. Interlock on. Interlock on. Fire one. Charging starboard. Five, seven. Jimmy, uh, get Mitch tucked away in the trunk so as to make room for Professor Popkiss. Sure thing, Dr. Baker. Interlock on. Roger, Mike. Interlock on. Five, two. Opening the roof doors, Mike. Okay, Professor. I'll close the roof doors by radio after takeoff. Roger, Mike. And now for the atomic witch hunt. Stand by, folks. Supercar's on its way. Full boost vertical. Dr. Baker? Uh, one moment, Mike. I will consult the plan. Now, let me see. Two, seven, four. Uh, Cross-reference, A7. I make it, um, 
another thousand miles to go. A thousand miles? What's the matter, Jimmy? You tired? No, but it sure seems a long way, Mike. Okay, then. Let's step on the gas. Full throttle, full power, maximum thrust. Forty-five hundred miles per hour. In approximately twelve minutes from now, we'll be at Temport. Elmer B. Jackson speaking. Yes. Yes, this is the sheriff of Temport. Uh, what do you say? Oh, oh, Mr. Withers of the State Department. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, I'm writing a report to you now. But I can assure you that those atomic bombs are not, definitely not being landed in this area. No. No, the Coast Guard have had positively no indication of submarine activity along our coast. There she is, folks. Timport. Well, it looks quiet enough. I wonder what secrets she holds for us. Guess we ought to fly out to sea and take a look around. Are we going to land on the sea, Mike? Yes, Jimmy. Supercar is about to become seaworthy. Cutting horizontal drive. Switching to turbo drive. Uh, Mike, I think we'll have a quick look round and then go under and investigate below. Uh, nothing unusual about the coastline. It's deserted at this time of the year anyway. Let's scan the rocks with clear view and take a closer look. You're right, Doc. Nothing unusual. Just rocks. Let's take a look below. Blowing all tanks. Supercar. Now I wonder what they're doing, snooping around here. The water's quite deep here, Doc. Uh, yes, Mike. Uh, surprisingly so, considering that we're not far from the shore. There's the bottom, leveling out. Mike, look, straight ahead of us. Rock formation. That could mean caves. Okay, let's take a look around. No sign of any caves, Professor. Not yet, Jimmy, but I'm certain there will be. Uh, uh, what's that uh, over there, Mike? Where? Uh, over there, about um, uh, 10 o'clock. It looks like a giant fish. It's a giant fish, all right. It's a submarine. A submarine? A submarine. So it is, Mike. And not an American one, either. Okay, let's tell it. This may be the answer we've been looking for. What do we do now? Are we going in after? I don't think that would be wise, Jimmy. I think, as Mike would say, we've got to play it cool. You bet we've got to play it cool. Now, we'll wait till the submarine comes out again, and then we'll discover what it finds so interesting in those caves. Gee, Mike, we've been waiting a long time now. How much longer do you think it'll be? No telling, Jimmy. Now, Jimmy, we must be patient. Okay, Professor, but I sure wish I had something to do. You ought to be like Mitch, Jimmy. It doesn't bother him. He's fast asleep in the trunk. <clears throat> Jimmy, we are surrounded by the, the, the beauties of the underwater world. Take a look around and absorb all the wonders there are to see. Yeah, you're right, Dr. Baker. Say, look over there. I've never seen fish like those before. And Jimmy, look over there. An octopus. An octopus? Gee, they're kind of scary looking, aren't they? 
Hey, Mike, look. It's a submarine. It's coming out. Yeah, we'll wait for it to get clear and then investigate. Uh, uh, Professor, I feel that to enter an underwater cave would mean that we would have no radio contact with the outside world, and that under the circumstances would be highly dangerous. Because right, Mike, it would be better if we set up our radio station on the shore and had it connected to supercar by cable. You're right, Professor, about the radio. Now the submarine's clear. We'll surface and set up a radio station on the beach. Here we go. I've seen enough to tell me all I want to know. Here we go then. Charging booth. Five, seven, nine. Uh, Mike, I think a radio check would be a good idea before takeoff, uh, don't you? Okay, Doc. Coming up to 15. Fire boat. Supercar to beach station. Supercar to beach station. How do you read me? Over. Hello, Mike. This is Beach Station receiving you loud and clear. Good, Professor. Here we go. I wonder what they're going to find down there. I sure wish I was going to be with them. Now, Jimmy, we've also got an important job to do, you know. Mike needs someone up here. Hold tight, Beaker. We're going under now. Around. <laughs> now, don't worry, Mitch. We'll be okay. Supercar to beach station. At cave entrance, starting our approach now. Right, Mike. Good luck. Does that mean that Supercar is going into the cave now, Professor? Well, Jimmy, the cable isn't moving, so that means they haven't started yet. They're on their way, Professor. <laughs> Gotta take it real easy, Doc. Yes, Mike. These rocks are treacherous. One false move, and we could rip the side out of supercar. <laughs> are you gonna give them a call on the radio, Professor? No, Jimmy. They will need all their concentration to steer supercar into the cavern. Seems we've traveled a long way, Doc. Do you, uh, do you think we'll be able to make it, Mike? Well, if a submarine can make it, I guess we can. There's still solid rock above us, Mike. Please call them, Professor. Let's wait a little longer, Jimmy. Any sign of clearance overhead, Doc? Uh, no, Mike. Still solid rock. Mike, there's clear water above us. Quickly, Mike, up. Take supercar up. Okay, Doc. drum is turning real fast. Hadn't you better call him now? No, Jimmy. Not until the drum stops. Beach station to supercar. Beach station to supercar. Are you receiving me? Hello, beach station. Supercar here. We have broken surface inside a large cave. The water here is as smooth as glass, so we must have come a long way. We're taking supercar to the edge of the rocks. Then we're going to get out. Over. Roger, Mike. Keep in touch and don't take any unnecessary risks. Supercar to beach station. Professor, we're able to get out of supercar now and have a look around the cave. If you don't hear from us again in five minutes... Put out an alarm. Roger, Mike. Mind how you go. Professor, I'm sure glad to hear Mike and Doc are all right. But where are they? That I can't tell you, Jimmy. But these underground caves usually come inland and then open out to gigantic caverns. 
It is possible that they could be right below where we are standing now. I don't understand it, Mike. We have certainly discovered a most interesting underground cave, but there's nothing to suggest there's any reason for a foreign submarine to call here. Let's go in a little further, Doc. Maybe we'll find the answer there. see the antennae on each bomb. Uh, and over there, the master transmitter, powerful enough to cover the entire United States. Yeah, and when all the bombs are planted, push a button and bingo. And all this could be done by one of the smallest powers in the world. A fiendish scheme, but a brilliant one. Yeah, and they obviously have some very good contacts in the United States. They must have, Mike. I don't get it, Don. This place is completely unguarded. Well, no doubt they are confident that their little hideout would never be discovered. Come on, Beaker. Let's have a quick look around and radio the professor. Stay right where you are. One move and you are dead. <laughs> You are standing on a trap door. Your weight has caused this automatic trap to operate. There are three machine guns pointing at you. You are safe as long as you keep quite still. If you step off the trap, the machine guns will shoot you to pieces. You are listening to a recorded voice. We are in real trouble, Mike. We can't get off this trap to radio the professor. He's going to radio for help anyway, Doc, if we don't call in five minutes. <laughs> Stay where you are, Mitch. Don't come any closer. <laughs> Mitch, stay where you are. If he puts his weight on the trap, Mike, it would cause the guns to fire. Yeah, particularly if he jumps around on it. Now down, Mitch, down. Down, boy. Okay, down, boy. Professor Popke's calling. Can you hear me? Over. Uh, uh, now, Mitch. Mitch. Go away, Mitch. Mitch! They don't answer, Jimmy. I think we must accept that they're in trouble. We must get help quickly. Yeah, Professor. Right away. Now, listen, Jimmy. I must stay here to man the radio. You go to the sheriff's house and explain everything. Now, hurry. Oh, we must be thankful that Mitch likes his sleep, Mike. That was a near one. It sure was, Don. Quiet. There's someone coming. Well, now look, Jody. Two rats caught in our trap. Yeah, they sure look pretty, don't they? I don't know who you are, but by now someone's on their way to the local sheriff. So you'd better release us. Local sheriff? Do you hear that, Rudy? They sent a message to the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is Sheriff Elmer B. Jackson speaking. Uh, what do you say your name was? Oh, Jimmy Gibson. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You don't say. Oh, now, listen here, boy. You better come right on over. Well, boys, what do you find? Two beautiful rats, Sheriff, in our trap. Yeah, and they send them to you for help. <laughs> <laughs> well, you boys had better disappear into the other room. I have a Mr. James Gibson about to, uh... Call on me. Looks like we're gonna catch the entire supercar team. Uh, Mike, uh, I have an idea. Glad to hear it. What is it? If we can get Mitch to pull one of those heavy packing cases over here, then we can substitute it for our weight on the trap. 
Then we will be free to move without fear of the guns going off. That's great, Doc. Mitch! Here, boy. Oh, wake up, Mitch. Come on, Mitch. Uh, come on, Mitch. And so you see, Sheriff, I guess they must be trapped in this big cave. Well, I reckon you're right, boy. Uh, say, uh, Rudy, uh, Jody, uh, come on in here a minute. It is some folk in real trouble. I reckon they need your help. And uh, now, boy, I guess you're in need of a little help yourself. <laughs> Come on, Mitch. Hurry. There's a good chap. Come on, boy. Jody, they've gone. Okay, drop your guns. This time you've walked into a trap. Do as he says, gentlemen. What are they going to do to Mike and Dr. Beaker, Sheriff? Oh, don't worry about that, boy. They'll be taken care of and then sent on a long journey uh, when our submarine returns. And don't worry. You be with them, and so will Professor Popkiss. You won't get Professor Popkiss. The professor's going to be worried about you not returning. So he'll come along here to investigate. Why? I guess that must be him right now. You know, Doc, we've got to hand it to them. That's a pretty good trap they've got there. Yes, Mike. Just think, if they step off the trap, three machine guns will fire at them. Uh, Mike, we must hurry. Say, you can't leave us here. Come back, Mike Mercury. And I am fair. It just ain't fair. Why, howdy, Professor Popkiss. <laughs> Glad you could come along. I get the picture, Sheriff. You are involved in the most evil plot to destroy the United States. Not involved, Professor Popkiss. In charge. Yep. In charge of the whole operation. Not any longer. Now just relax while we call in another sheriff, the United States Navy, to deal with your pet submarine. It was a brilliant scheme. But you reckoned without Mike Mercury and Supercar. Thank you.